In this video guys, we are going to look at why bother planning your trade, specifically if we don't even know what's gonna happen in the trade. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so why even bother to plan a trade. If you don't know what's gonna happen in the trade, you have no idea how price is gonna move. Is it gonna to rip to highs, is it gonna rip to lows, is it gonna stagnate? You have no idea. So what's the point in planning a trade? It's a perfectly valid question. But the key guys, when you're doing any form of planning, is it's not necessarily in the plan as such, because the plan may well change. The plan may well have different scenarios in it. You know, if you look at the way the military plan, you know, they plan an operation, but they plan for contingencies. And what they'll do, I'm definitely not a military expert by any stretch of imagination, but what I believe they will do is they will have a plan of action if something unusual happens and they will allow themselves to reconsider. So for example, and someone please correct me in the comment section below if you're in the military or if you happen in the military, let's say they come into unexpected contact with the enemy, uh, they will say, okay, if we come in unexpected contact between here and our um, point that we were supposed to get to along the, along the way, we will either, depending on the level of contact, we don't know how many people they're going to be, then what sort of weapon we've got, what terrain we're in, our position, or are they going to carry on pushing forward uh, and try and outrun them, or we might engage them and neutralize them, or we might retreat. And I guess that'll be the decision for the commanding officer who's actually on the front line. But anyway, let's not go down to just military um, analogies here. Same kind of thing with a lot of things, right? If you're in a trade, the idea is, okay, we're going to plan that we're going to go from here to here, or we want to see from here to here and if we don't we're going to take a stop but what happens if halfway along the way something different than we're expecting happens now as with that military scenario they will say okay if that happens we will assess the conditions at the time and we'll make a decision but that's already planned in to the plan so it's not necessarily thinking about every eventuality and knowing that it's going to go perfectly textbook because it's not and a trade is never going to be tech okay no, time to time, I'm going to get a great one, and that's the way it is. But the key is the confidence comes from being prepared. That's the key difference, guys. It's sitting down and preparing your trade and thinking about what could happen when you're going to reassess, when you're going to readjust. And we'll look at these in a moment. That is the way the confidence comes from knowing that you're prepared for every single eventuality. And when something unusual happens, you just go back to your plan and say, hey, what am I prepared to do in this scenario? My my, my actual um, decision-making process is now X, and then you can make a fresh decision. And that may be just based on new uh, information you've got. You're not saying you're definitely gonna do, I'm gonna go long or short or close or add. You're basically saying, okay, if this happens, I'll give myself the flexibility to reassess the position. So let's, let's look at an example, guys. So the first thing is, let's imagine we've gone long in this position here, um, double bottom, retest through support, standard kind of stuff. You take the long, and the obvious one that I would hope most of you uh, watching the, the channel do is you decide where to put your stop loss in. And that's going to, you know, we've gone into loads of depth about that before. And it's obviously something we're going to cover um, a lot in the future because it's such a key topic. But you're going to put your stop in a sensible position that you believe is the best possible place to allow for noise, but also to come out of the trade if the thesis is not working. So pretty simply, you put your stop in. And again, are you gonna come out of half of it? Are you gonna come out of some of it? Are you gonna all come out? That kind of stuff. So pretty standard. And then you're gonna have some targets. So you're gonna decide, okay, uh, I'm gonna scale out this position. And you might start with a rough roadmap. You might say, okay, I'm gonna do my first scale here. I'm gonna do my second scale here. And I'm gonna allow my third uh, to be a trailer. Pretty standard stuff, you know, you're just coming out of resistance and the third one might be a trailer to see if you get a runner. Fine, that's your preparation. So a very basic roadmap so far, but it's not enough. You know, it's not enough because unless the price goes straight the way through to your targets, you are going to come up with various challenges along the way. And they might be the trade stagnates. The trade just suddenly rockets. The trade comes back, stops you out, goes back to your level. Now, these are all things that you may think you've got under control, but in actual fact, in the heat of the moment, you may be making irrational, kind of emotional-based decisions. A key one is if it stops you out as soon as you go into the trade and rip straight back up again. Are you gonna allow yourself to go back into the trade and consider it just unlucky, just got caught on a little bit of a price spike, or are you gonna leave it and move to the next one? So that should be accounted for. So what about now, if the next day, price just gaps right up to position three? 
Are you gonna think, hey, you know what, I need to reassess this. I need to maybe put a stop loss in for the majority under it and see if we get a real runner here because something's come out that's quite spicy. Or are you gonna stick to the planning, exit one, exit two, and trail three, and then one and two happens to be a better position. So now you can start to think of the different permutations and, and, and scenarios the trade could have. So also guys, the big one that I find, um, I know for myself as well, this has helped loads, is having a reassess point based on price. So what do I mean by this? Let's say price goes up, almost tags your first target, and then retraces 50%. What are you gonna do then? Are you gonna to stick to one, two, and three? And that might be the right thing to do. You know, this is very personal again, and also time frame your trading, all this kind of stuff. Are you gonna to stick to it? Or are you going to go, ah, you know what? It didn't quite get there. I probably need to move my stop now, or I might move my price target down. Because if you imagine if that had gone up and, and kind of sat there and, and struggled here, and your price target's here, you might say, well, for the sake of 20, 30 pips or whatever it is, I might bring it down just into this range here so that I'm not expecting a breakout. You know, there's still adjustments and amendments, or you might stick to your initial plan. So again, thinking about reassessments on price. What about if it just stagnates and does nothing? You take the trade, it just sits there and does nothing. Are you gonna reassess if it does nothing? And that's when we come into the time section. So if it's been four or five days and hasn't hit my first target, I will allow myself to reassess. If it's been four or five hours, if you're a day trader, you get the idea. So rather than just going, oh, you know, it's sitting there and I'm annoyed that it's not hit my target or it nearly hit it before, now it's just sitting here, you know, it's, it's by my stop. All these things are going through your mind and you're constantly thinking, well, if I close it now, I'm, I'm missing out a lot of price, uh, a lot of, um, additional move, I've taken all the risk on, yeah, but it's not quite set up nicely enough, I shouldn't listen to what the chart's telling me, and you've got this internal battle, whereas you're better off having that decision made for you and say, okay, well, after four days of stagnation, I will make a decision to move the stop and targets. And so when that four days of stagnation happens, you just go four days of stagnation, right, I now am making a decision to move my stops and targets. So it's a far more focused approach rather than going, should I do it? Should I not make a decision? Should I adjust it? You've already decided that I am going to do it. Now, that might be very, very minor adjustments. That's irrelevant. The point is you've already given yourself permission to do those adjustments after the four days of stagnation, five days, two weeks, whatever time frame you're trading. So reassess point for time. And then you've got things like the pattern to reassess the trade. I touched on this a little bit earlier. Let's say you double topped just before your first target or second target or final target. You know, especially the final target as well. Imagine you've had a really good stretch. You've had some off here, you've had some off here. Your third target's sitting here and it's double topping and it's starting to fade a bit. Do you know, are you going to hold it or are you going to say, you know what, it's close enough, let's bring it down, let's go to market. Are you going to allow it a little bit more time? Are you going to wait until the close of the day? And all these little different things that really, you know, take a lot of thought in the, in, the, in the moment, but actually if you're planning it prior, it's very easy for you to think about. You know, thinking about a trade recently for me, ripped up, beautiful trade, in the long, scaling out, and then it was just, you know, ripping to highs. And I said, okay, well, you know, I will just wait until the close. I know that if I get really extended move, that I just want to wait and see where it closes. And if it's pulled back a bit, I'm prepared to give it some back. I'm not going to give back more than half of the day's gains. But if it pulls back a little bit, then fine. You know, I'll close it a day. If it's closing at highs, I'll see if I can get another day out of it. I'm prepared to do that. Part of my plan is just closing at highs on a big extension. You might get an additional gap up for use of US stock, by the way. You might get an additional gap up on day four or five, and you might get you might be leaving so much on the table. So it's planning for these different things, guys. Patterns to reconsider trades. So and another thing might be. Maybe it's a reversal pattern just like this near your level. Maybe it's a very, very strong bullish pattern that's building and you're thinking, well, actually, that's actually more of a flag because we've got this, and again, you know, interpretation comes from, from your perspective. Or maybe I need to move my, my target up here a bit because if it's a flag, I don't want to just take on the breakout. What I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, if it breaks out and fakes out, then I'll, I'll drag my, my target down. And if it goes and runs, then I'll, I'll, I'll look for a further extension. I'll kind of take my pole and I'll extend it up there and all that kind of stuff. And the final thing you've got, guys, is the expectations versus reality. You know, we're very, very um, optimistic as traders when it comes to the actual trade. 
you know, and, and we kind of look at it and go, oh, it's going to go from here to here. In our mind, we don't really think about how it could do that. And very often it could do it by a big drive, a pause for a few days, a, a little chug, a pause, a pullback. We all want those momentum trades to just pause and then just rip again and we'd be on the multi-day runner. And, and very often they are, if, we, if we're good at picking the right environment, the right market, then we can cherry pick a little bit. But, you know, often they won't. Often they will sit around our stock for a little bit. So, it's thinking in the mind and saying, okay, how could price get to this level? And you know, what am I expecting? Because they're not going to be disappointed. If you just rip up straight away and, and hit your target, and it just sits there and stagnates for a little bit and maybe chugs a bit, gives a bit back, you're not going to say, oh, you know, that's disappointing. It gave a little bit back. Well, that's what price generally does. It's not going to have a solid green, solid green. It'll, you know, maybe it'll have a good run and give half back and then it'll progress back up. Maybe it'll look like it's double topping, but then it'll grind through. You know, all these things. So you, if you're thinking in your mind, again, when it actually happens in reality and you're thinking about different scenarios, none of them really become a surprise to you. So the importance, guys, of, of why bother planning your trade is number one, so that you're prepared for different eventualities. You're never going to know what's going to happen. You're not going to say, okay, I'm definitely going to do, it's not, you're not programming an algorithm almost, like an if-then statement, but you're saying, okay, well, if this happens, then I will do X, and X might be I will reconsider the stop loss position. I will reconsider the target. And by having that, it means that you've got a plan of action, you've got a roadmap, but you can adjust it as you go along and you feel far more in control. And that's the key thing, guys, is being in control and feeling like you know, you're dictating the terms of your risk as opposed to the market dictating the terms. All right, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.